Three billion people rely on wood, charcoal, or other kinds of biomass to cook their food, and that kills three to four million people every year. And this is just because they are inhaling that, all of that smoke. It's as if you were, you know, barbecuing, but right there in your kitchen. Danny Wilson is a development engineer who's trying to tackle the global health crisis that's linked to cooking on traditional cook stoves. Almost half the planet's population has no choice but to use these inefficient burners every day, even though they're putting themselves and their families at risk. When I traveled to rural Tanzania last year, I met Moineti, who told me how using a cook stove affects her and her grandchildren. Does that create a lot of smoke inside the house? Sometimes you cry because of the smoke. Yeah. What Moineti and her family experience are the effects caused by particulates, fine particles composed of toxic compounds. These particles are found in high concentrations in smoke generated from traditional cook stoves. And if inhaled on a regular basis, they can cause a whole spectrum of illnesses, including stroke, lung cancer, and heart disease. As Mwaniti was cooking, you could hear her coughing and her grandchildren coughing around her. And as she explained, she has no other choice but to cook this way, even though she knows that it can cause harmful long-term health issues. What's incredible is that smoke inhalation kills more people worldwide than HIV and malaria combined. To combat this global health crisis, Danny and his team at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory have been working on improving cookstove designs. The, the cookstoves are designed to really satisfy two important needs for people. One is to reduce the amount of fuel that people have to burn to cook their food. And then the, the second objective is to reduce the amount of smoke that people are exposed to. The team based their initial designs on the needs of internally displaced people in Darfur, Sudan. Here, wood is in scarce supply, meaning women often have to walk for hours in search of sources of fuel. When your life centers around a seven hour walk to go get wood and bring it back home, it's very hard to make space for education or business, entrepreneurship, um, time and energy invested in kids, et cetera. So this, this problem is not only a health crisis, it's also an economic crisis, and I think of it as a crisis of drudgery. The team came up with the Berkeley Darfur Stove, an inexpensive, high-efficiency, wood-burning stove that reduces fuel use by 50%. Around 40,000 of these stoves have been distributed in Sudan and Ethiopia, and Danny and his colleagues are constantly testing, updating, and improving the design thanks to the input of the women who use it and the data that Danny collects using a specially designed sensor. Sensors give us real-time, high-quality data about how the decisions I'm making as a designer are impacting uh, the adoption of those products uh, out there in the field. The challenge for Danny and the team now is to adapt and refine their cookstove design, not only for the people in Darfur, but for the other three billion people around the world. That might seem daunting, but for Danny, it's motivation. The problem's so large, there's a very large potential impact. I can see how the decisions that I'm making as a designer are influencing people's lives, and it just gives me energy and excitement to, just to keep on going. Danny isn't the only one trying to solve global health problems at the University of California, Berkeley. Watch this episode to see how researchers can transform a cell phone into a portable microscope that can diagnose parasitic diseases like malaria in just 30 seconds. We want to take a moment to thank our partner, the Blum Center for Developing Economies at the University of California, Berkeley, an innovation and research hub that's tackling issues in global poverty. Make sure to check out some of their incredible work by visiting blumcenter.berkeley.edu. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to Seeker Stories.